welcome to the Paper Crafters Library. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this What's Up card, which features coloring with Copic markers. Now the stamp set that I'm using comes from Paper Smooches, and it's the Perky Plant stamp set, and this is the image that I'm using. I've already got it mounted on my acrylic block. I'm going to ink it up with my Sukineko Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is my favorite ink for coloring with Copic markers. I'm stamping it onto a four by five and a quarter inch piece of Paper Trays Stamper Select white cardstock. So there you can see what that looks like. I'm going to give it a quick shot with a heat tool just to let make sure it's thoroughly dry before I start coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start by coloring the leaves and the stem, and the colors I've chosen are YG11, YG13, YG17. Now, I like to remove my caps from all my markers before I start coloring. That way it's quick and easy for me to switch between my colors. And then I keep them beside me, ordered from the darkest to the lightest. Now, there's different ways that you can color from light to dark or dark to light. My preference is from dark to light. I just find it easier to blend. I'm using a feathering stroke. I'm starting with my light source as though it were kind of shining straight on, which means sort of the center areas of each um, section of my plant is what's going to be light and then the outer edges are going to be shadowed. So here I'm starting with my YG17. YG13. I'm using a feather stroke just overlapping the edges and then coming in with YG11. First layer is always going to look a little bit um, it's not going to look very blended, but as you come back and apply a second layer and blend over or feather over those edges, it'll start to blend out. There you can see what that looks like, and I think I'm going to go in just one more time, applying very light pressure. When I'm applying my second color, I'm never going all the way to the edge, I'm just blending the edge of the last darkest color. So there you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second leaf in the same manner. So there you can see what that looks like. Now for the stem, I'm going to take my darkest color, YG17, feather up a little from the top, a little from the bottom, take my next color, feather over that edge, and then my lightest color. And then I'm going to just repeat that one more time. The smaller the area, the less that you have to blend. So there you can see what that looks like. So we're ready to move on to our next color. Next thing I'm going to color is the teacup. And the teacup itself is going to be blue, and I'm using BG01, BG05, and BG09. And then the little dot in the center is going to be yellow, but I'm going to save coloring that until I get to the yellows in my plant. So once again, starting with my darkest color, which is BG9, I'm going to add a little bit of color to the outside. Then BG5. Just feathering over that edge. And then BG1. And again, just feathering over that edge. And as with when I was showing you the leaves, as you can see, it looks very patchy with your first layer. So that's normal and to be expected. So I'm coming back now with my BG9, coming just a tiny bit further than I did before. Now my BG5. Feathering over that edge, coming in just a tiny bit more than I did before, and then ending with my BG1. Now I'm not going to go back with my darkest at the moment, I'm going to come with my second darkest.
the more contrast there is between the colors, sometimes the more you have to work at blending them. And if you have a hard time with the transition, what you can then do is, with your lightest color, pick up a little bit of color from the tip of the next darkest color, and then use that to help you blend the edges. You can get rid of that color by scribbling on your grid paper, or scrap paper, and it doesn't harm your marker at all. So there you can see what that looks like. Left a little bit of white space here, so I'm just going to fill that in. Now for my handle, starting with my darkest, my medium, and then my lightest. A little bit of dark again, a little bit of medium. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the medium with my lightest and then finish off with my lightest. So there you can see what my blues look like. Now all of these, once they dry, um, I always take a, a second look at them and if it looks like they need to be blended a little bit more, then I'll come back with my markers and I'll blend it out some more. So for my petals, I'm using R20, R22, and R24. The darkest area is going to go around my um, darkest area is going to go around close to the center of the flower and then it's going to feather outwards, it's going to get lighter and then the lightest area is going to be at the tip. Now I'm going to speed up this clip while I color it because it's a fairly fairly long process to color the whole flower and this way you can watch me as I color the whole thing. Mm -hmm. saw what that process looked like. I went through the whole process of going from dark to medium to light three times for each petal. And as you can see, there's still some petals that are not as blended as I'd like them to be. You can still see a distinction between the light, medium, and dark colors, more so between the light and medium. Now one of the reasons that is because red is one of the hardest colors to blend. It takes more work to blend that than some of the other ones. So now that you saw how I did that, I'm essentially going to do the same thing going over the petals 
couple more times until it's blended the way I would like to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be back to finish off the flower. So I finished going over my leaves a second time and I'm now ready to do the center of the flower. For that I'm using Y11, Y15, and Y38. I'm also going to use those same colors for the little circle on my teacup. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the dark, a little bit of the medium, a little bit of the light, and I'm not going to blend beyond that. Now for the flower, I'm going to take the dark along the outer edges. And that's the Y38. Then I'm going to blend that out with Y15. And the Y15 is coming right from the border of that to the edge of the mouth and then a little bit above the mouth. And then the Y11. So now I'm going to come back the darker one. And I'm just going to work on half the flower at a time. It's easier to work on smaller areas because your ink, your Copic markers can stay wet that way and when they're still wet it's a lot easier to blend. So now the other side. And then one more layer, and that should be good. So there you can see what that looks like, and our flower is now colored. The next thing I'm going to do with this card is center and stick it onto my card base, which is Daffodil Delight cardstock, and it's a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, and I'm going to center and stick this mat onto my card base. My sentiment is going to be this Good Times, which comes from the Studio Calico wood veneer die cut pieces, and as you can see, I use the What's Up in the first card I made and I'm now using Good Times in the second one because there's no duplicates in that set. They're all um, they're all different sentiments. So I'm just going to press this to the mini glue dot and then I'm going to stick it maybe a little bit more that way just making sure that that's straight. So there you can see what that looks like finish up my card with a few little rhinestones. These are um, called Tiny Twinkles and I purchased them through Tailored Expressions. I'm going to use one of this larger size one and then two in the next size down. Now, I really like these because they're a lot smaller than the normal self-adhesive rhinestones that you purchase. Um, they're just, as you can see, a little bit a little bit finicky to maneuver and having tweezers really helps. To stick them down I'm going to use a little bit of my glossy accents and I'm just going to put, put a little bit too much there, just a tiny little dot and then using my tweezers, very carefully going to pick up each rhinestone and place it on top of that dot of adhesive. There you can see what that looks like and it adds just the perfect little sparkly touch. So there you can see what our project looks like. If you enjoyed this video, you enjoy the way we teach and would like to learn even more, we invite you to check out the Paper Crafters Library. 
Whether you are a beginner looking to learn the basics or an advanced paper crafter looking to learn new skills and techniques, you'll find it all here. Stamping, card making, scrapbooking, altered art, we cover it all. With over 1,000 videos currently in our library and approximately 50 videos added each month, we are the largest and most comprehensive online library of video tutorials for paper crafters on the internet. We invite you to visit our library and see what we're all about.